Um, we are so glad that y'all are here today. Welcome to Clearview. This is part of our Lunch and Learn series that we do. We do a Lunch and Learn every single month, and all are welcome and are invited. And we do target seniors, so we try to do senior-friendly um, topics and, and just teach you something new. So our hope is that you come to these, you enjoy the food and the fellowship, you learn a little something new that you can apply to your life to either make it easier or more healthy or whatever it might be. Um, so my name's Emily and I head up the marketing department here at Clearview. And um, some of you guys might get our newsletter. If you don't get our newsletter, let us know before you leave today. We'll be happy to add you to our mailing list. It's a quarterly newsletter that tells you about all of our different events. Um, and you can always check them out on our website as well, clearvieregionalmedicalcenter.com. Um, so without any further ado, I'm going to introduce our fabulous speaker today. Um, his name is Stephen Pulliam, and he just graduated from the University of Georgia with a degree in health promotions. So he is going to be talking a little bit about what's in your pantry. Um, as some of us age, perhaps we don't want to cook as much as we used to, or maybe we go from cooking for four to cooking for one and two, and how do you make that work with your budget and in a way that's safe for you as well? So that's what we're going to be talking about today. So, Stephen, I'm going to turn it over to you. Go Georgia. Go <laughs> dogs. Although I think we have a Georgia Tech alum right there, don't we? Yeah. Auburn. Okay. Well, like Emily said, I'm here to talk to y'all about some nutrition and different ways to eat healthy on a budget and utilize leftovers and stuff like that. So I'll just go ahead and get started. And if y'all have any questions during the presentation, you can just raise your hand and I'll do my best to answer them for you. So first I'll start off with kind of the basic of what food is. So food mostly made up of three things that we normally consider, uh, carbs, fats, and proteins. And carbs are like what you're eating today, you've got uh, broccoli, mashed potatoes, uh, biscuit or roll. Those are normally what carbs are. Things like, as you see in the little box up here, like veggies and berries are really good carbs, like fruits and vegetables, because they're slow digesting and they keep you full and they have a lot of vitamins and minerals and nutrients in them for you. And then we've also got things like starchy veggies, like potatoes and sweet potatoes that are also good carbs to eat, just not as frequently as fruits and vegetables. And then we've also got things like rice and bread and uh, those things you want to eat in moderation as well and sugary things like cookies and candies you want to kind of keep those to a minimum not as much just just every now and then you know save it for like Christmas and Thanksgiving when you got some, some pies and all that good stuff and then next we've got uh, fats and fats are one of the most uh, calorie dense and nutrient dense foods these are things like uh, peanut butter, nuts, avocados, fatty fish like uh, salmon, those are all good fats. And then we've also got uh, bad fats like uh, processed food or fast food. It has a lot of saturated greasy fat and trans fats in it. So you want to avoid those or eat as little of them as possible. And also um, try to limit um, things like uh, bacon things that are processed meats and fats, like a butter as well. Those are things you want to kind of keep down a little bit just because of their high saturated fat content. And then we've the last thing we have are proteins. And I don't have a picture up there, but these are things like what you're eating, like chicken, that's a good source of protein, fish, um, beans and nuts are also good vegetable sources if you want to try to switch it up from eating meat to eating more uh, plant-based or vegetable-based, those are good ones. And then there are smaller things that make up food. They're called micronutrients because they're smaller, like vitamins and minerals. And things like vitamins would be vitamin C, like what you get from oranges, vitamin A, like what you get from carrots, and then uh, vitamin B, which gives you energy and you can get from a lot of different fruits and vegetables as well. And then minerals are things like calcium, like what you get from milk, or sodium and potassium. Things like that are the micronutrients, the smaller nutrients that really help your body function well. And then we'll talk about some recommended daily allowances for y'all's age group, how much you're supposed to eat. Um, fruits, you want to have about one and a half to two cups a day. And what's considered a cup, this chart's a little hard to read, so things like an apple would be considered a cup or a serving of fruit or a medium banana a grapefruit, a handful of grapes, a handful of berries, stuff like that, eating a peach, that's all considered uh, a cup or a serving of fruit. 
and then you want to have a few more vegetables. You want to have between two and two and a half cups of vegetables, and you could either measure them out in a cup, or you could just have, say, two carrots or a whole squash, maybe a handful of broccoli or a pepper. Those are all things that are considered a cup or a serving of vegetables. <laughs> and then next we have grains. These are things like oats and potatoes and rice and bread and all things like that. And for men you want to have, or for women you want to have five ounce equivalents and for men you want to have six. And an ounce equivalent is what we consider it is like a slice of bread would be an ounce equivalent, like that would be one serving. Or a cup of cereal or half a cup of rice or pasta, things like that are what we consider an ounce equivalent. And then talking about proteins have about the same for women, about five ounce equivalents and then five and a half for men. And with protein, what we consider an ounce equivalent would be like an ounce of meat, like an ounce of chicken or fish, something like that would be an ounce equivalent. Or something like an egg, or maybe a fourth a cup of beans. Those are all what we consider ounce equivalents. And then dairy would be like yogurt and milk. Just measure out a cup of that, a little glass of that, and that will help you get three of those. And then for oils and fats, five to six teaspoons. So things like olive oil or uh, safflower oil or peanut butter, things like that are some good fats that you can have. And there's a little graphic up here that y'all can look at. That's just an easy way to use your hand to uh, remember how to measure things out. So the whole hand is about the, like a serving of bread, like one slice of bread. And then if you look at the palm, that would be a couple ounces of meat. So two to three ounces of meat, and that would be a good meal right there. And if you make a fist, that's a good way to remember how many uh, veggies or rice or pasta to eat. And then this tiny little thing at the tip of the finger is about how much fat you want to use for serving. So a little bit of peanut butter or butter. Yes, ma'am. Question. Can you borrow somebody else's fingertip for that? <laughs> <laughs> if you want to. <laughs> That's like nothing. I know. It's tiny, isn't it? So there are a lot of conditions that are related to health. Uh, the way that you eat, like obesity, diabetes, high blood pressure, all this stuff is related to how much you eat. High high blood pressure is related to how many, how much salt you take in. Cholesterol is related to how much fat you eat. All these kinds of things, and these conditions are related to food because if you eat too many of one thing, like if you eat too much salt or too much fat, that can affect your health and cause a certain condition. Or as if you also eat too few of something, like you're not getting enough fruits and vegetables, you're not getting your vitamins in, that can also affect how your body functions and works and can make you feel poorly and develop certain conditions. But the good news is that changing how you eat can help that. So healthy eating is a really good way to help you get nutrients that the body needs as well as help you to lose or maintain a healthy weight. And you can also reduce the risk of chronic conditions and it also helps with your energy levels because if you eat good food you'll be more energetic throughout the day you'll be fuller, won't need to eat as much, things like that, that can really help out. So now we'll talk about some different types of foods and good foods that you can eat. And with vegetables and fruits, you can either get fresh, frozen, or canned. And fresh tends to be a little more expensive. I personally normally get frozen or canned vegetables because you can get one bag for a dollar that's got four servings of vegetables in it and I can just cut it open and pull it up in some water and there's my vegetables for the day right there, nice and simple. But sometimes the vegetables that come in cans have a lot of like salt or they may have fat added to them. So if you want to get like a strainer or something and open it with a can and dump it out and uh, rinse it off, let them sit in water for a little bit so they get rid of all the salt and that's a good way to use that. And fruits also come sometimes in like syrups or heavy syrups with a bunch of sugar added. And if that happens then you just do the same thing where you pour in a little strainer and strain off the extra sugar so you just get the, the good fruit part. So I've got a bunch of examples up here in regards to fruits and vegetables, things like green beans, eggplant, mushrooms, carrots, cauliflower, tomatoes, broccoli, cabbage, and spinach are all real good vegetables. Things that the mantra that people like to say is to eat the rainbow. So eat a bunch of red, green, yellow, blue, all kinds of stuff like that. Just get a bunch of different colors in. And the same thing with fruit, eating things like apples, blueberries, strawberries, grapes, plums. Just get a bunch of variety so that you can get a bunch of different um, sources of fiber, and vitamins and minerals and all things like that. 
And then with dairy, milk and yogurt are great. Just make sure you're not getting things that have a bunch of added sugar. Like yogurt containers that have fruit in them generally have a bunch of added sugar from like fruit syrup instead of the actual fruit. So it's better to get a plain yogurt and slice up some fruit and put that in there. Maybe put a little sweetener in there if you need some extra sweetness in there. And milk is great, just plain milk. Um, chocolate milk and flavored milk tend to have a lot of added sugar. So just plain uh, 2% or skim are good choices for that. And then with grains, we want uh, some good sources are generally the less processed something is, the better it is for you because that means they haven't added any chemicals or salt and things like that to it. So we want to make sure we get grains that you can just have raw and cook them up. Or you can, like I said, you can get canned ones and uh, drain them off, drain the salt off. If you're looking at beans or lentils, something like that, you can drain the salt off of. But some good grains are things like whole grain, breads or cereals especially ones that are fortified with different vitamins and minerals like iron and B vitamins and stuff. Those are great sources of uh, grains. And then cornmeal, oats, brown rice, and quinoa. And oats, you can either get like the big tub of Quaker's oats that are just plain and cook them up in a pot or in the microwave and add in like some nuts and fruit, maybe a little brown sugar or sweetener, or you could get the instant packets that are plain. The plain instant packets are fine because they don't have any extra sugar or anything added to them, but the flavored ones tend to have a lot of extra sugar, so I'd stay away from those if you want the instant ones and just get the plain ones and add your own sweetener and fruit to that. It's a good way to get some flavor and some variety in there. And then things like beans and peas and lentils are a good uh, carbohydrate source, fiber source, and a good vegetable source for protein instead of having meat. So it's a good little change of pace to eat there, but we want to make sure that you get, if you get canned ones, like I said, to drain off the salt and the fat and just have them plain and you can add your own flavor, which I'll talk about in a little while. Or it's really cheap if you get them dry. Like I eat a lot of beans, so I get them dry and I can get a container that has eight servings in it for $1.39. And that's super cheap and that'll last me for almost the whole week. So with those, with dry beans, you have to either soak them overnight or bring them to a boil for a few minutes and then let them sit for a little while and then reboil them again to cook them all the way. And then lentils are easier. You just have to bring them to a boil and then let them simmer for a little while, like 15 minutes, and then they'll be done. So those are good sources and ways to eat cheaply while also getting uh, good sources of nutritional variety. And then fat-free refried beans and vegetarian baked beans are great as well. And then finally, things like starchy vegetables, like sweet potatoes, squash, corn, green beans, and pumpkin. You can get these fresh. Sweet potatoes are generally really cheap, normally like 55 cents or 70 cents a pound. So they're really not terribly expensive, but you can also get those canned if you want. Just make sure, like with everything else that's canned, to just wash off all the extra added syrup or salt. But those are all great sources right there. And then there are a ton of different protein sources that you can get. Like I mentioned earlier, beans and lentils are a good one, and fish and seafood are great as well. Salmon's a really good source of uh, a fatty fish that'll give you omega-3, which are really good fatty acids for your heart. And then chicken and turkey without the skin, because the skin generally has a lot of fat and cholesterol in it, so we want to stay away from that and eat more breast meat that has a lower fat content and a higher protein content. And you can... I'll go over some different ways that you can season and cook those up in a little while. And just like beans and lentils, nuts and seeds have, uh, they're a good alternate source if you want to have a more vegetable protein source as opposed to an animal source. They have a little more fat, but they also have a good source of protein too. And then eggs and cheese in moderation are a good fat and protein source. And then we have fats. Like I said earlier, nuts and seeds are a little higher in fat, but they've got good amount of fiber and protein in them as well, so they're all around a good thing to eat. And then avocados are good. You can eat them plain, like slice them up and put them on salads, or you could get fancy and make some guacamole out of them, like mash them up and mix them with a little uh, cilantro and onion and different things like that. You can dip some chips in that or put it on some beans or make a spread out of it. So there's a lot of things you can do with those. And olives are a good source of fat as well if you wanna have those on salads. And then oils like olive oil, uh, safflower oil, different plant-based oils are really good to cook with in small amounts. You can also drizzle it on top of a salad or on your meat or something like that to add a little extra flavor and texture. And then things that we want to typically avoid or eat minimally are things like 
sodas and sports drinks and sweet tea that are very sugary and dense in calories and nutrition. You want to kind of avoid those and have things like water because water is amazing to drink. It helps with all your bodily processes, makes you feel better, and also helps you stay fuller throughout the day. And then low cal or calorie free drinks are good too. Like um, diet sodas are good. I wouldn't have those all the time because of the artificial sweeteners in them, but those are a good option every now and then. And then things like uh, herbal tea, because that doesn't have any calories in it. And uh, herbs also have a lot of really good health benefits. That's a, another good option to try and drink. And cutting back on high calorie snacks and desserts. So like today, instead of cheesecake or pound cake, we had some fruit for dessert. That's a good way to uh, switch up the sweetness factor right there. And then uh, keeping portions small is another good thing to do. Instead of, like I'll talk about in a little bit, when you go out to eat, generally if you eat out, the portions they give you are huge. Like I can't even eat the full portion when I go out. So some things you can do is to get an appetizer for an entree instead, or if you get a full entree, you just eat half of it and save half for another meal, something like that. Those are just little tricks you can do to avoid overeating and also save food for later in the week. So there are, salt is implicated in a lot of different things like blood pressure. So there are a lot of different ways to eat salt and y'all can look over the little handout I gave you if you want um, because a lot of Americans get way too much salt. So things that are high in salt would be like fast food, like burgers and pizza and fries, things like that. And then also um, frozen meals, like the Stouffer's and the Minute Microwave meals and all that stuff tend to have a lot of salt in them to help them stay fresh longer. And then deli meats like salami and ham, they're generally processed and they have a lot of meat in them, or not a lot of meat, a lot of salt in them to kind of help them stay fresh for longer. And then also canned soups and pickled foods have a lot of salt <coughs> in them as well. So something that can help with reducing salt is checking the food label on foods because on the back or side, wherever they have the label, there's generally the breakdown of all the carbohydrates, fats, and proteins of what's in the food, and they also have the vitamins and minerals and the salt, and it'll say sodium on the side. And generally, for a whole day, we want to say underneath 2,300 milligrams of salt. So on the side, just check and make sure that it's low or not. Generally, I believe the standard is between 15 and 20% uh, daily value of sodium and something's considered high, so you want to kind of stay under that. And you can also uh, flavor things in different ways instead of using salt, like herbs and spices are a great way that I'll go over with y'all in a little bit. Cooking at home is a way to reduce salt because when you eat out, they tend to add a lot of extra salt and flavors and things like that to uh, make you want to come back and eat it more. So using things like fresh fruits and vegetables, dried beans like I talked about earlier, brown rice, oats, unsalted nuts and seeds, and fresh protein sources like fish and chicken are good ways to uh, not eat that much salt. And then using spices instead, like I said earlier, you can use lemon juice is really good on seafood. It's also good on like rice dishes and stuff like that. So you can use that to add a little extra flavor. And then salt and sodium free spice mixes. At the, uh, I know at the store they have these, uh, there's a brand called Mrs. Dash and it's all sodium free. They'll have like a, like a spicy Southwestern blend, garlic and herb blend, all kinds of different blends like that that you can use to either like marinate your meat overnight or just use it to cook it right away, things like that. And then onion and garlic are a great way to uh, add some extra flavor, just chopping up some fresh onion, mincing up some garlic and sauteing that in a pan and topping your uh, meat or other dishes with that is a great way to add some fresh extra flavor. And also onion and garlic are really good anti-inflammatory so they can help with different uh, inflammatory things like uh, arthritis and things such as that. And then herbs are really good with salads, pasta, or rice dishes, and also on meats as well. Things like um, mint is good on salads, dill, and then other herbs that you can use, things like cilantro, and other things like this are really good for adding flavor without adding calories or salt and things like that. I know on the back of this uh, eat less salt sheet, on the right hand side there's three different blends that y'all can try at home if you want to try. There's a mixed herb blend that you can use however you want, an Italian blend if you're making like some spaghetti or a different uh, salad or something like that, you can use that. And then Mexican blend if you want to add a little spice to your meats or making like some chili or something like that, that'd be a great thing to try out. So these all have minimal or no sodium and it's a great way to uh, add some flavor without using, uh, without using salt. And something else that's on the back of here is uh, condiments like soy sauce, ketchup, and mustard generally have a lot of salt as well. So if you want to look for 
low or no sodium varieties in those, that's a great way to reduce your salt intake there as well. And then also on the back is the little part about allowing your taste buds to adjust because if you've been eating uh, more flavorful and salty and fatty foods for a while, then your, your uh, taste buds are going to be like, there's no flavor in this. So you just got to slowly <laughs> take stuff out and let it adjust because the body's a weird thing like that where it, it doesn't make adjustments right away. It's got to slowly ease, ease its way into it. And then some tips and tricks to eat healthy on a budget. I know I'm still living on a college budget, so I gotta, I gotta cut all the coupons I can. So looking up recipes and meals is a good way to like make a list to take with you to the store so that you know what you need to buy and you don't overbuy or overspend there. And then planning meals around foods that are on sale or coupons that you find is another good way to plan recipes and buy stuff in bulk and prepare ahead of time so that you don't have to go to the store as much and you don't have to spend as much. And like I was saying earlier, beans are a really good protein source and they're also extremely cheap if you buy them dry, like black beans, uh, garbanzo beans, white beans, black eyed peas, things like that are really cheap, good vegetable sources. And then making leftovers and saving them, like I said earlier, ordering a full entree and only eating half of it, or prepping a big meal ahead of time, and then either putting some in the refrigerator for later in the week, or you can freeze it, and uh, food generally can last in the freezer for months at a time, so you can make a big batch of something, freeze it, and then just defrost it later in the week or later in the month, whenever you want to eat it. And like I said, making a double recipe. And then, as I said at the beginning, uh, fruits and vegetables that are canned or frozen can be a little cheaper, so you just gotta make sure that if they're canned, drain off the salt and sugar, and if they're frozen, you can just pull them out and either, if they're frozen veggies, you can cook them in a little saute pan and add in some meat and other things, or I like to just boil them in water and have them as a side dish. And then with frozen fruits, those are great as like a dessert alternative, just popping some frozen grapes or berries and eating those. Or they're really good if you want to throw them in yogurt, make like a little yogurt parfait or something. Those are really good as well. Then cooking with less processed grains like oats and rice, like buying dry rice and dry oats and cooking with those is really cheap as well. Like you can get a big like five pound bag of brown rice for a few dollars and that can last you weeks or a month. So that's a really good way to eat on a budget and then I mean eating, drinking water instead of soda and alcohol water from the tap is free so that's a good way to save some money right there then using leftovers is another really good way and also using the freezer is a good way to uh, save uh, save some money get this warmed up So like I said, making double recipes or large batches, things like making a whole crock pot of like super chili and having some now, maybe putting some in the fridge for later in the week, you can even freeze some. I know my mom, when she makes chili or something like that, she'll put it in a Ziploc bags, like put a little serving in each bag because you can just pull it out and defrost it whenever she wants to eat it. That's a simple little way to, to have some food later on and also use the food that you're getting for cheap at the store, things like that. And then eating half an entree and out. And then refrigerating foods that you can eat within a few days is a really simple way. And uh, bulk foods, freezing those for like one to two months. My parents shop at Costco and Sam's and just buy a bunch of stuff in bulk every now and then. And uh, whenever it's on sale, and just save it. So that's a great way to uh, buy cheaply and then save it for later if you don't need it right now. Mm -hmm. And then you can also use leftovers to make another meal. So there's a couple examples up here. Like you're roasting a chicken for a dinner and you have it with some boiled potatoes and green beans. There's a couple ways you can use the extra chicken, like putting it on top of a salad, or you could toss it with some pasta and veggies and make a little veggie dish, or even freeze it for later on in the week or in the month, something like that. Maybe make some chicken salad out of it. Just a bunch of different ways that you can use leftovers <coughs> instead of getting rid of things. And then things like beans. So you say, let's say you cook a pot of beans to make rice and beans. There's a bunch of ways you can use the extra beans, like making veggie tacos with beans and veggies and salsa and a bit of cheese, wrapping it up in a tortilla, or using the beans to make chili or soup. Things like these are, are good ways that you can save leftovers and not have to get rid of stuff or uh, use everything in bulk. All right. So I'll just do a little uh, cooking demonstration for y'all, show you like a really simple, easy, healthy uh, recipe that I found online. All it has is a little some veggies. I think I got this bag of veggies at Walmart for a dollar, dollar fifty, something like that. So it's really cheap. And then just one chicken breast or half a chicken breast, depending on how much protein you want to get. And then uh, 
some salad dressing for a little flavor, and then some uh, some brown rice to throw in there and get some carbs and fill you up a little bit. So we'll just see if the skillet's warmed up a little bit. Check it. Put the apron on too. See how warm it is. Gotta throw my apron on. <laughs> like I'm in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> so first we're just going to start off, I may make, uh, I'm just probably going to do half a recipe just because I only have a, a tiny little skillet. If I had a bigger one I'd do a full recipe. So working minimal here. So I'm just going to put a little bit of olive oil in here. It calls for a tablespoon so I'll just put a little, little drop in the middle just to warm up the skillet so the other things don't stick. And then I've already uh, chopped up some chicken. Keeping it nice and cold under here. So normally I would do a, a whole breast that I chopped up, but I'm just gonna do a little, little half recipe here and put about half of it in, if it'll come out. There we go, that's good. And just mix this with the oil, let it cook up. And you can also use uh, some canola spray, like cooking spray, nonstick spray is good. Low calorie, no calorie way that you can also save some calories if you don't want to use olive oil or you can't, or you don't want to buy it. Either one. So just let this let this chicken cook up for a little bit. I have to turn the temp up. Can you plate or anything? If you want to go uh, get one of these bowls from the right. thing in Emily's office, got that. Yeah, we're just gonna let this chicken cook up for a little bit. You can also add some extra seasonings or spices to this if you want. Is it bad to use that that uh, already cooked chicken in the frozen food or something? You can get that if you want. Generally, it'll be a little more expensive than buying the raw chicken, and sometimes. You have to look at the, the back of it where the labels are because sometimes they'll inject that chicken with salt and stuff like that to keep it fresh for longer so it may have extra salt added to it. So you just gotta, gotta be careful with things like that. Have a cooking. And you also want to make sure that you cook meats thoroughly all the way. Don't want to have your chicken be in cold and pink in the middle because then you can uh, risking things like salmonella and other stuff like that and you also want to cook beef and pork all the way because we don't want to get any kind of nasty uh, stomach infections or stuff like that when we're trying to eat healthy. Well, could you use beef like that? Yeah, you can substitute in like some lean ground beef or stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You can also use seafood like you want to do some shrimp, do a little stir fry with some shrimp, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Generally, the best options are either going to be grilled or baked because they won't have extra bread and fat added to it. So, generally, I think everyone should stay away from fried food just because it's generally not that good for you. So, go for the baked or grilled options. They'll also have because uh, generally those will have less uh, less salt, less fat, less breaded things like that, and they also will tend to use different herbs and spices and flavors with that that you can kind of pick out what you like and don't like and try stuff on your own. If and when I do fry foods, I try to use canola oil or mm -hmm. one of the... Um, Olive oil and coconut oil are good oils mm -hmm. to cook with. Those are more low temp oils though, so you don't normally fry with those. But you could put like a little bit of uh, olive oil or coconut oil in the bottom of a skillet and kind of heat it up at like a low or medium low temperature and put like some uh, bread, some chicken and like some bread crumbs or coconut flakes or stuff like that and do like a semi-fried thing in a pan like that. Mm -hmm. Let's 
chicken up a little smaller so it'll cook a little faster. You gotta be careful sometimes when you're cooking because I know most of this chicken is done but I just cut a little piece open and it's still pink in the middle so you just gotta Double check with that sometimes just to make check sure that everything's uh, cooked all the way. Looking good. And that's almost done, so we'll just go ahead and see if I can open this little bag of veggies up. Should be strong enough. Hopefully. <laughs> Poke a little hole in it and open it up. Yeah, these are frozen veggies are my favorite way to uh, to get veggies just because they come in big bags with a lot of variety in it. Like I could pay a dollar to get one bell pepper, or I could pay a dollar to get a bag full of broccoli, beans, carrots, baby corn, water chestnuts, and red peppers. So that just seems like a better deal to me personally. More flavor and more variety. So I'll just put about half this bag in here because I'm making a half recipe. Just put a little bit in there. Let these cook for a little bit. <laughs> May have to get a bigger skillet. Huh. <laughs> 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 there you go. Hopefully we'll have enough room in this little skillet. It'll we'll be a full one, but we will see. Yeah, they don't have too many cooking supplies in the marketing department. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta take what we're given. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It'd be funny if I had like a little pink apron that said Emily on it. <laughs> she said she had one, she just forgot to bring it. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> you knew it was coming. <laughs> One thing you do have to watch out for when you're buying uh, frozen veggies is sometimes they'll have um, sauces or seasonings added to them that can add a bunch of uh, salt. So I just get the plain ones and I can add my own salt. Like if I'm having uh, more of like, if I buy like peppers and onions and I want to have like more of a Mexican themed meal, then I'll just throw a little salsa on them because salsa is a good way to uh, get some flavor and spices and, and a little bit of salt in there with not too much. Just check the back and make sure it doesn't have a ton in it. But a lot of like fresh salsa and fresh pico de gallo has really good flavor and it doesn't have that much salt. So that's a good way to uh, throw that on there. And then if I'm having more of like a stir fry or something like that, then you can look for things like low sodium soy sauce or uh, other sauce blends that don't have that much salt in them. Just check the back of the label and make sure that it's under, generally under 10-15% you want to stay under there. I think most of the stuff I get has like 6%, just a few milligrams in it, stuff like that. You can also add herbs and spices in there to add a little extra flavor. So it looks like the veggies are coming along. So we'll go ahead and throw the brown rice in there in a little bit. Looks like they're about good. Made a whole cup right here, so I'll just take half of it and scoop it in there as I make a mess. <laughs> As to be expected. There we go. 
lid back on that. And this right here is a good way to prep food up in advance. So last night I just cooked up some brown rice and stuck it in the freezer. Super easy way to make up some food and then you can write the date on it so you know when you made it and then just pull it out whenever you need it. Really easy way. Definitely think I have a large skillet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you have to be very yeah. precise with his <laughs> scooping. Smells good though. Oh, Rice in good. there. It looks like it's getting all warm and mixed up together, so go ahead and uh, pour a little bit of this dressing on there. You can use like low sodium uh, dressings like Italian dressing or like a balsamic vinaigrette, things like that are really good ways to uh, have some extra flavor. So I've got a little zesty Italian seasoning right here. Just want to mix up all the oils and whatnot as I burn the food. Just pour a little bit on there. Call for a fourth a cup. I'm just guesstimating right now. Pouring a little bit on there. Mix all this flavor up. Ooh, that smells good. I feel like I'm like Rachel Ray or Paula Deen right now. <laughs> Except Paula Deen would be like, one stick of butter. Yeah, we don't need that in here. Dude, Paula Deen, man. Like Paula Deen, we all weigh 400 pounds. No wonder she had to go on a special diet yeah. when she stopped doing her stuff. Getting too hot, you got to sprinkle it right over your head. <laughs> That's what I was looking out for. That would be great if that went off. We'd all be running out the doors. The hospital would be. All right. <laughs> yep. Got all that all cooked up now. Want to put a little bit in some bowls or yeah. something like that. If I'm smart, I wrote it down. <laughs> you could send it to me. Uh, I'll write it on your piece of paper. There you go. But yeah, if y'all want to take a picture or write down that recipe if you want to try it out, if you like it. I don't normally like brown rice. It's good. It's good. 